So welcome everyone to this international symposium on governance and relational process. I'm Shito Gio, and together with Professor Kenneth Gergen and, and uh, Professor Otanes, we developed this symposium as part of the, um, you may call it continuous an inquiry at the Gerald Hermes Foundation for Peace. Um, in collaboration with others like yourselves. Those questions can challenge assumptions, those questions can invite new ideas and innovative practices and so on. So for an example, in, in the last 20 years, we started with questions about the aims of education, pillars necessary for educational transformation. And this inquiry led to a um, questioning to really what constitutes human well-being. And then the inquiry about well-being take us, has taken us to questions concerning the kind of economic or political systems that nurture human well-being, our plan, and as well as planet's ecological integrity. And to address these questions would require us to explore how we might contest um, postulations that underlie the practice of governance and institutions at different levels, hence this symposium. So I'm just giving you a quick outline of the background of, of this symposium. We are grateful that you're here and uh, um, um, so Gemma just joining us. So we're grateful for each one of you uh, to be here and also for your contribution to the symposium. First of all, by writing the outline of a discussion points around the themes. And the sec secondly, by reading and considering different perspectives provided by each other. So um, as our bios already on the symposium website, we're just going to take um, very briefly uh, a few minutes um, for all of us to introduce ourselves to each other, basically to connect our own screen image um, with our names and also our voice. Um, so to do this, I'm going to um, just go through my my screen and I'll, I'll, I'll invite you and then you can share a little bit with everyone. I'll start with um, Professor Ernest Tom. Hi, Shelto, um, and, and thank you for this invitation. Uh, uh, I'm professor of organization theory at Copenhagen Business School, where I also lead uh, I manage the, what we call the Center for Organization and Time. Uh, so my interest in, in governance here is going to be temporally uh, in, inspired. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, next one on my screen is Mike. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Hardy. I'm a professor in intercultural relations at Coventry University after a, a career as a diplomat. And uh, I've been 10 years back at the university. I lead, I led there the Center for Trust, Peace and Social Relations. My current interest is in leadership. However, I'm the chair of the International Leadership Association, and I'm working currently on new forms of leadership for the challenges of the 21st century. Thank you, Mike. Next one on my screen is Eva. Eva, you might need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that follows naturally from Mike. I'm also really extremely interested in, in leadership, public leadership in general. And for some time now, I've also been really interested in political leadership and pretty much, you know, the connection between uh, politics and governance, really, and how to lead those processes. And uh, I, am a, I am, in fact, also a professor of uh, uh, public administration and democracy, so that's uh, suitable. Uh, and I, I, I'm really happy to get this opportunity to talk with you all about these uh, really important questions that, that, and, and the trouble that the world is facing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eva. Next one on my screen is Dina. So hi everybody, I'm Dina van Heiburg and I'm participating here today as an observer. Um, I am a PhD student at North University in Sociology. So my, my interests um, connect to social justice and uh, inclusive participation in cooperation. Uh, and also specifically in relational welfare and relational process to, approaches to governance. So thank you for this invitation to join. 
Yeah, so observers, we have three observers, although they're observers, it means that they're not presenting anything, but uh, they are just um, participants and contributors in their own rights. Thank you. Next one is on my screen is Jakob, Professor Torfing. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello to everybody. I'm a professor in politics and public governance at Roskilde University, and I'm also professor too at the North University, the same as Dina. Uh, and then I'm director of the Roskilde School of Governance. And there we have been holding on with studying uh, uh, network forms of governance for the last 20 years. And we have been interested in how collaborate, you know, how uh, governance networks can contribute to more effective, more democratic, more uh, innovative governance of uh, postmodern societies. And uh, more recently, I've been more and more interested in collaborative forms of governance and co-creation and uh, uh, currently writing a book on um, co-creation of sustainable development goals. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one on my screen is Ken. Yeah, <laughs> Ken Gergen, um, senior research professor at Swarthmore College and also the head of um, an organization called the Taos Institute. Um, my primary interest has been for a long time connecting theoretical work in the academy with um, practices in the field, sort of making that link as, as a, all of one piece. And so the Taos Institute has been sort of the major vehicle for my doing that. It's an international organization with about 700 people around the world, primarily interested in the co-creation of meaning or social construction of meaning and how this would affect or can affect or does affect our various forms of practice. Most of that work has been in education, uh, healthcare, organizational development, and recently has turned increasingly to the issues of governance. Mm -hmm. So this for me is a wonderful opportunity to, to learn, to offer what I can and uh, to be here with you. Thank you. And Ken is our co-organizer of the symposium. Um, Patrice, you're next on my screen. Hello, everybody. Um, it's uh, nice to be able to join, even if last minute. Thank you, Chateau, for uh, including me. Um, uh, I'm a professor at the, of Comparative Abrahamic Religious Traditions at the University of Montreal in Canada. And uh, I'm also on the board of the GHFP and senior advisor at the Kaiseed International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue in Vienna, Austria. Um, uh, I'm interested in particular in um, inter-worldview dialogue uh, and its Place in understanding identity dynamics uh, uh, together with uh, power dynamics. Uh, and I realize more and more that uh, while dialogue has often been used to promote better interpersonal relations, um, the notions of the ways in which we can apply dialogue to uh, inter-organizational uh, di uh, dialogue is, uh, is actually very much uh, a, a lack, I would say. And so better understanding the place of dialogue in governance uh, and especially in Interinstitutional dialogue is important uh, in my research at this point in time. So it's nice to be able to join you all. Thank you, Patrice. Um, next one on my screen is David. Um, I'm uh, an associate at the uh, Gerard Emmys Foundation for Peace and uh, a Harmony Professor of Practice at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Um, I'm working at the moment with Sherto on our initiative, which we call a narrative of love. And I'm here as an observer this afternoon and very much looking forward to that. Thank you, David. Matt, you're next. Hi everyone and thank you Sherto for having me. Um, I, I have to say, I'm both incredibly privileged to be here and also feel a little bit like an imposter with all these um, proper academics here. I run, um, co-run an organisation, Compassion in Politics. I don't come from the academic background, but I guess we're trying to do some of the work to put the brilliant ideas that and research people are doing on psychology and compassion in particular into practice, uh, specifically at the moment in the UK, in the political system in the UK, but we do have branches abroad, a fledgling group in, the US and in South America. So I'm really delighted to, to be here and to um, pretend to be an academic for an hour or so. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Gemma. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, 
sorry, I have my I haven't got a paper up there, but I was only asked last week and I've been so busy. Um so yeah, um I'm in a bit of a transition point. So I'm gonna say a couple of things I'm involved in because they they all contribute, as you'll know from you know your careers and those of you, you know, maybe Matt as well, who who have several overlapping hats, but um I am a trustee of the Wellbeing Economy Alliance in Scotland, and I've worked really closely with um, the global team on creating the, the policy guide, which is a policy guide for wellbeing, which is all centered around how do we involve people in the decisions that, that, that guide their future. Um, I'm a practitioner of art of hosting, participatory leadership. That's been a huge thread for me over the past sort of eight, eight years. Um, I currently work for um, the Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose at UCL, um, and I have a PhD in sort of financial systems change thinking. Um, and I am starting a new job on the 1st of June as um, Director of Policy and Impact, uh, sorry, of, of Policy and Insight for the Scottish National Investment Bank, which I also wrote the first report calling for the creation of the Scottish National Investment Bank. So I'm going to be stepping into a role where I'm actually going to have some measure of power slash influence to try and bring a lot of this relational processes to this policy making sphere as well. So um, I was delighted to be asked to come along and it's actually been a really timely prompt for me to, to think about these things. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing from all of you over the next couple of days. Thank you so much. And now we have Garrett. Uh, my name is Garrett Thompson. I'm the um, CEO of the Get My Own Meds Foundation for Peace. I'm Professor of Philosophy at the College of Worcester in the United States. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to say that in the GHFP, we started off very much as a peace foundation, primarily interested in education and peace processes. And through that, we became more and more concerned about the nature of well-being because many ways of thinking about well-being really just reflect the values of our society rather than challenging them or pointing new directions. And so for us in the GHFP, or at least for me, the work on governance is something that's relatively new. We're kind of interested in the relationship between governance and political economy. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really looking forward to the discussions. Thank you, Garrett. Ali? Yes, hello, everybody. I'm Ali Musaiye. Um, I used to be at UNESCO only uh, two years ago, uh, working on different uh, projects, uh, like the Slave Road Project, the Silk Road Project, and the general history of, uh, of, of Africa. Um, since I left the UNESCO, and I now I, uh, we created a new think tank to, to bring together uh, scholars, uh, thinkers from Africa, but also from the African diaspora, to reflect on, on, the, on, the, main, on the, the paradigm sh uh, shift, uh, to, if, uh, if I say that, uh, to reflect on how we can reconceptualize, uh, re revisit all the what we call the indigenous and indigenous uh, knowledge of Africa and African diaspora, on uh, specifically uh, in uh, to on the issue of governance, but not only on the issue of, of governance, but how we can to, today rethink uh, the the basis for an African modernity, uh, including uh, modernity in the democratic. Uh, institution. So that's why I'm very, very pleased to participate in, uh, in our uh, workshop here on, 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 the, on the governance, because I think that kind of debate would also fit uh, what we are doing. It's excellent. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Finally, we have uh, my um, co-organizer and co-moderator today, Ota. Yes, my name is Utanas. I'm a professor of counseling and uh, mental health in uh, at the university in uh, Trondheim and uh, I have been so much looking forward to this uh, symposium as we have been discussing this for many many months uh, and uh, and uh, I hope it's not an echo because uh, Dina is on the other side of the wall of the, the wall here so we are so called a cohort in these times 
Uh, my interests are mainly in uh, social inequalities and how governance can um, support silent and populist voices, and especially around uh, around uh, social justice. And, uh, and in addition, I'm, I'm very interested in how what are the new roles of administrative leaders mm. in governance when they're hybrid, the hybrid roles of uh, within the new public management and new public governance discourses as competing and co so, uh, so it's um, in co competing and coexisting as you have written about Jack Jacob in, in your brilliant book. So it's, it's for me, it's a, such a, an amazing opportunity to learn together. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Otto. And you can see that this group of people were meant to meet with each other. Ken, over to you. Yeah. What a wonderful group. I'm kind of sitting, wow, what a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, I don't know how much I can set the context. I have to sort of speak from my own background and try to make the connections here. We can all be connected where the process of meaning making is continuous, where we are creating value, we're creating meaning, and that meaning is as moving, we can coalesce, we can create groups, we can create ersatz communities. In fact, right now we are doing doing this. They're gathering from multiple countries, trying to talk about governance, which could be looked at as seditious in some way. I mean, here we are plotting the future of government for all. I mean, it's a small band of, 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 of rebels. Um, now it's that kind of thing that's, that to me is most concerning. That is, we have a world in which ordering is increasingly complex, difficult, and perhaps impossible, where disorder is every day in the making, where the notion that there are particular groups of people like governments that can they bring order back into that is probably um, uh, 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 no longer possible. That is that we have governments like these institutions based on geography and slow moving communication. And if that were the nature of the world, they might be more functional. But at this point, I don't see those functions as, as, as working. And indeed, a lot of what we're getting as the, the difficulties of government and why we're here in some way is because of those incapacities. So the question, of course, is what next? Now, I think for a lot of us, the, and in fact, I think almost as a knee jerk response, um, we look to relational, we look to, to us, the people. And we see time after time groups organizing in order to do something, either to overthrow, to protest, or to co-create new forms of governance, develop new kinds of practices that might change this, that might distribute uh, the capacities to create the order or to bring order or to allow us to live together. And so the shift in some sense has been toward the relational process, either either concertedly or by implication. Now, for me, as a scholar, that raises the question of how to conceptualize, how to think about that process, because it's difficult to go back to relationships, mm -hmm. the idea of single persons. We've got groups moving constantly. We've got coalitions. We've got collaborations. How to how to how to think about that. Now, for a number of us, the, the move has sort of been towards what you'll call the relational, from, that is moving from relationship to something relational. And the challenge has been to how to think about those coalitions, how to, how to grasp that and what difference would it make. Now, there are a number of those extant, and I'm not going to review them here, but let me just tell you just a little glimpse of where I am because it's kind of radical. And it does raise some different kinds of issues about where to go from here. <laughs> what I've been trying to do is to say, look, we what we have are, are governments, uh, we have um, populations, we have agencies, organizations, and so on, all separate entities. But if if you look at the 
the process by which those that are created, that is the very process of creating meaning, it requires some kind of coordination. That is the word meaning didn't exist until there was some kind of coordination among people. No one can develop the language. It requires something else, which is that movement together, that assent to the other, that agreement that, yes, that word will mean something. So if, if looked at in that way, it's not the entities that we should be concerned with. It's that process of creation, that coordinated process, and what that's like, because it's out of that process that we create the meaning of what it is to be an individual, what it is to be a democracy, what it is to be a government, all that comes out of the process. And we worry too much about the entities that we've created, the things, the persons, the places, the institutions. So in this sense, the move for me has been to look at the process first, that is process before entities, process before persons. It's out of that process that those persons, those entities, those organizations come to be anything. So to protect, nurture, create a process. To give you just an example, if, if we set up a public debate, let's say between candidates, that process that we've scaffolded will create antagonists. It doesn't matter if they agree on 90%, they will become antagonists. If we create voting as our main re mode of expression, we've already created an antagonistic situation where it's me, everybody out for themselves, and voting is expression of me as opposed to you. If we create political parties, we've already created an antagonistic process. Mm -hmm. become antagonists just because there are parties, not because we have parties, and so and behold, they're antagonists. So this, the, the process we scaffold creates the persons we become. So if we have governments as separated as institutions from people, the governing and the governed, we've set, already set up a creation in which we, the governed, become either um, uh, submissive to what's happening or protest, questioning, um, wondering, um, distrustful. So the very creation of government as a separate entity already um, is creating an unworkable situation. So then the question for me becomes really one of the future. What kinds of processes? What, what are we scaffolding? What could we create? What are we creating with these various movements? Um, can we break down those bifurcations from out of which we're suffering? What would that look like? It's not easy because just bringing people together, as many of us are for, is bringing people together to dialogue, to co-create and so on, we don't know how to do that. You bring people in the United States together for a, a, um, a, a community meeting of discuss the future, it will be a shouting match within about 20 minutes. It's a, a disagreement and everybody wants to hold their own position. So the process itself creates indeed the antagonisms. So what is it that we're building? What can we build? Um, in terms of the future, everything depends on that. This capacity for world communication is going to break down any form of governance of the kind we have now. <clears> that somehow we've got that that process of ordering has got to be something we're we're involved with every day. That the coordination of the, of our coordinations is going to be something that's going to have to be part of everyday life for us, but that's in the long run. Anyway, that's some of my concerns. And um, I, th again, this is a point of view. There will be others. Um, I'm open, but I'm very curious and the, I'm really anxious to see if we can indeed coordinate among ourselves. So thank you, Chair Tom.
Thank you so much, Ken, for um, starting up with a very provocative question about um, the nature of the governance and what is a governance. 